Let's review subungual hematomas. Subungual hematomas are not an infectious process per se. It's basically a collection of blood originating from the nail bed. If you think about your nail bed, it's highly vascularized and bleeds a lot. And what can happen is any type of blunt trauma to your digit, like for example, a hammer to your nail bed, dropping a brick on your foot, or even the repeated trauma of runners, right? When you have your toes hitting the anterior aspect of your toe box basically causes trauma on the nail bed, bleeding, and that bleeding just collects in that space. You'll see in this picture, it's actually spreading from the subungual aspect as well as underneath the epinicium, underneath the cuticle. It's just the blood has spread and really created this tense pocket of, uh, of, of fluid. Now, these are very tender because, again, your nail matrix is so sensitive. And so that pressure causes throbbing, sharp pain for the patient. The treatment for that is you want to drain it, right? So the way to drain this is called trephination. Trephination is creating a hole through your nail that will drain that pocket of blood and give the patient relief. There are a couple occasions where you want to think about maybe removing the nail because if you have severe trauma to the nail matrix and maybe have a laceration that extends outside of the nail, that's a case where I'm going to consider maybe removing the nail and fixing that laceration and basically doing it as like a nail removal laceration repair. Same thing if the nail is completely avulsed and hanging off, just remove it, fix the laceration, and treat it as if it was, you know, an open wound healing by secondary intention. If, however, you do not have extension outside of that nail and there's no, you know, laceration beyond that site and the nail itself is intact, you don't have to do that step. You want to just basically drain it, relieve the pressure, and have the patient follow up. You want to make sure you're using a septic technique, right? So again, this is typically not infected, but the fact that we're opening it up is going to, um, you know, put it at risk for de developing infection. So one of the biggest complications for subungual hematomas is you trephinate it, and they come back a couple days later, there's bacteria in that closed space, and it's infected, and you've got to treat that. So aseptic technique, typically antibiotics. No, I'm not going to be starting this patient on antibiotics if it's not infected. If they've developed an infection because of my procedure, at that point, I'm going to consider starting them on a course of antibiotics. There's going to be two videos for this showing two different techniques, so let's walk through them right now. When I'm performing a trephination of a nail, I really look at it as two approaches. You can do a hot cautery approach, right, where you're using, either using a hot cautery to burn a hole through that nail. Alternatively, you can heat up a paper clip or safety pin, and it just basically burns a hole through the nail, relieving the pressure. The alternative, and we'll show it to you in this video as well, is going to be using an 18-gauge needle uh, almost as a drill, right? So you, you've got the beveled tip, and you're spinning it on the nail, and it's going to basically carve out a little hole, again, relieving the pressure. No need to heat it up. It's all going to be mechanical from the cutting. So let's walk through these two techniques. In this first video, you can see hot cautery. The patient pulls back because they actually felt the heat. You want to try to burn that hole before you get to the nail bed and create that pain. But if you do, it's okay. It's very quick. You can notice that the blood is pulling out the second it com comes out. Now you relieve that pressure as that blood is coming out. This is something that I would basically then wrap, give them good return precautions for signs of infection, and maybe have a follow-up in, uh, in two days if I'm concerned that it's infected or it was complicated. Otherwise, they're good to go home. In this second video, we're going to review how to do the trephination of the nail with an 18-gauge needle. It's relatively straightforward. What you want to do, again, is aseptic technique. You don't want to introduce bacteria into that space. You're taking the bevel of the 18-gauge needle, and you're spinning it. You're just going to be spinning and using the cutting edge to create a hole. You want to stop once you get release of the blood. You'll see the blood come out of that hole. If you go any further, you're going to cause pain because you're going to be going into the nail bed itself. Occasionally, with a large subungal hematoma, you might need to create a couple holes, right? Two, three, sometimes four, to really get adequate drainage. Overall, though, these patients do very well. I'll put on a bulky dressing to kind of soak up the serosanguinous fluid that's going to drain from that hole over the course of the next couple hours today. I'll give them good return precautions in terms of if this gets infected, 
please come back. And I'll also let them know, like, occasionally that nail itself will fall off in a couple weeks or even sometimes months. What happens is the nail itself is lifted off the nail bed and so no longer attached. It will be attached at the skin and the cuticle eventually just falls off. Not a big deal. A new nail will grow from the matrix and they'll have a finger that looks just like normal.